Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning we're going to talk about how to upgrade your environment on a budget. So let's jump right into it. So looking at how tumultuous the last year has been for most people, our spaces matter more than ever. And so it's important to be able to look at your environment, whether you are working from home or whether you are just spending more time at home in general and figure out what aspects of your living conditions need to be changed, need to be upgraded, need to be improved so that you have a, a better space to be able to operate from. So when you're going through this process, it's important for you to set a budget for you not to just go spend whatever it takes for that space to be everything you hoped and wished it would be, but actually going through the process of saving up for those renovations, for those updates, for those decorations that you're hoping to have, and then be able to go through the process of actually getting it done. So when you're going through this process, we've seen a massive surge in the cost of renovations. When when we're looking at actually going through that process, you have to anticipate uh, an increase in cost due to the demand and the shortages of materials. And so when you're going through and actually getting the bids to get a major uh, remodel done or even a minor remodel done, it's important for you to keep that in mind. Now, before you actually proceed with one of those bids and you actually go through the process of getting a renovation done, you're going to want to check in with a local realtor who can run comparables on your property. Now, if you don't have a realtor that you necessarily know or trust, you may also consider jumping on a free platform like uh, Trulia or like Zillow, where you can actually see what houses in your area that are comparable to yours in square footage and style and so on and so forth have actually sold for. Now, why I say this is that so many people go in to a renovation with making the modifications that matter most to them, not thinking about the resale. And you have to think through the resale whenever you do any kind of remodel so that you don't over improve for the neighborhood, so that you don't put a ton of money into a certain aspect of the, uh, of the home that actually won't return the investment that you put into that uh, specific remodel. So when you're going through this process, you want to make sure that you don't improve the home above and beyond what it is worth. And so you want to factor in what that home will be worth after the renovations are done and what the home is worth in its current condition. And based on that, that will help you determine how much work to put into the house and whether it just needs a freshening up or a minor update or if it needs a complete overhaul. So in real estate, we know that location is key. So if you plan to stay put, location works for you, it's, um, it's desirable for you and hopefully desirable for others, it's important for you then to figure out, okay, what's the next step? So if I know that the house is worth investing in based on the based on the actual location, based on the values for that location, what is the next step beyond that? And I would just say, you may wanna look into what updates you need to do in a kitchen or the bathrooms uh, or the master bedroom of sorts and, and look at those remodels first if you are actually going to hire a contractor and do an overhaul. But if you're going to do more of a minor update of some kind, and let's say you have a kitchen that you spend a lot of time in, uh, that you don't love the, you know, the cabinet, you know, color, uh, you know, or, or the countertops or the backsplash or something like that. Those typically can be lower cost items, depending on the level of materials you install. And you may be able to refinish the cabinets over a weekend, or you may be able to put up a uh, backsplash in that kitchen over a, a you know, few day period. And so looking at that from a standpoint of, okay, how, how much work do I need to do in order for it to make a big difference in how I utilize the space, how the space feels and how productive then I am in the space. And so looking at that from a standpoint of how you can increase the value of that home without necessarily 
uh, doing a complete overhaul and, and bringing in a contractor to gut the place, but something that can actually improve uh, the value and the quality of life while you're there. So being that offices are especially important these days, you'll wanna figure out, okay, if you are going to revamp your office or your studio, for example, uh, you'll wanna set a budget first. So for example, this office setup uh, was about $600 minus the um, you know, audio visual equipment as well as my library. But, uh, but what I did is I went through, I priced out uh, specific components, decorations through Ikea, and then also was able to get a shelving system through Joss and Main. And those different components, uh, you know, could have been a lot more expensive if I went to a pottery barn or some other uh, higher end store. Uh, but I decided to spend about $600 on this, on this setup. And, uh, and based on that, that was to enable me to have a proper background, to have a uh, proper setup that is easy to utilize every time I need to jump on a video call uh, or uh, for other purposes. And so you'll wanna figure out what the needs are of that specific space and then set the budget that you're willing to spend for that space. And I would just encourage you that if you have an office space that you have a backdrop that you need, uh, you know, for video calls or for some other purpose, that you you really don't need to spend a whole lot in order for it to look really good, in order for it to present well. And so you could do something like removable wallpaper. You could do something like a shelving unit, like the one behind me. You could use, uh, you know inexpensive decorations in order to uh, spruce it up. And I would just say that there's a lot of aspects that you can add a, uh, a tremendous amount of value in uh, without necessarily spending a lot of money. And so figuring that out of what the space is that you want to improve, what the look is that you want to go for, and then what the budget is that you're setting that at based on what you have in reserves to use for that purpose without going into debt will be especially important for updating your environment. So going through the process of figuring out what areas you want to update of your environment, it's important for you to figure out what actually makes the biggest difference, what has the biggest impact for you. And surprisingly enough, there's large amounts of people's homes that they don't use regularly. So focus on the areas that really do uh, get utilized most. And that's why I brought up the kitchen, the bathrooms, uh, and in the home office specifically. Now you may have other areas that are very important to you that you utilize a lot, but for this example today, it's especially important for you to sit down, figure out what areas have the biggest impact on you, and then basically build out what you want to have in those specific spaces rather than a addressing the entire space, the entire home uh, at once. So once you identify these spaces, you can basically sit down and figure out, okay, what are the uh, low cost, high impact uh, changes I could make? So maybe that is putting up drapes, maybe that is painting the walls or putting up some accent, um, you know, wallpaper in certain uh, walls and, you know, throughout the, uh, the space. Or it could be something where you're doing a low cost uh, flooring upgrade of some kind. And so when you're looking at that, figure out what actually has an impact on you, what you do notice, what bothers you or eats at you, write those down and focus in on how you can improve those specific components without gutting the whole place without uh, spending more than you necessarily need to just because it's gotten under your skin. So how I structure the budget typically is you want to look at what projects you could get done at the $250 point. So it may be replacing some hardware on some doors. It may be uh, painting some walls uh, or putting up some drapes, but figuring out, okay, what can I do under that 250 threshold? And enable yourself to to do them in stages so if you have 250 dollars in your savings account in your reserve account in order to use for this project uh, go ahead and uh, utilize that to to make some improvements and then from that point you can basically see okay at 500 dollars what projects could I get done at that level or a thousand dollars what could I get done at that level and basically building it up from there and in allowing your resources that you have in reserve uh, to, to really feed how quickly you move along 
in these projects without going into debt. So these palatable projects will allow you to move at the pace that you have the resources to do so. Meanwhile, allowing a lot of this supply chain aspects to catch up so that hopefully the costs of renovating a space, if you need to do a larger renovation, uh, will come down in the near future. And so figuring out what you can do to improve your space uh, based on the aesthetics alone, and then figuring out from that point what larger vision um, you know, standpoint you have uh, to, to revamp maybe landscaping or to do a full gut on a kitchen or something like that, uh, that then you can build up to. So when you're going through the process of doing a project like this, just plan on it taking longer than you anticipate it taking and costing more than you anticipate it costing. So when you're looking at those 250, $500,000 projects, make sure that you're being realistic. Make sure that those projects can actually fit within those budgets. So my call to action today comes down to looking at those certain projects that hit those thresholds and figuring out which ones you're going to complete first. You always wanna have something you're looking forward to, something you're saving for uh, within your plan to spend. And so therefore, these types of projects, being able to knock out certain things that have high impact on you, uh, and then being able to work up to those larger projects that will allow you to have a complete remodel of, of some aspect of your home will be really rewarding rather than going out and prematurely overspending on a project just to have it done and then have the debt load that follows because that wasn't well planned out. If this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.